The actions of Kenya Gen Z and the result of those actions have stirred the hearts of people, especially the youths across Africa, and it has pushed some to decide to take similar actions. In Uganda, citizens are planning on hitting the streets to express their dissatisfaction with the government of Uganda. These people who, as we said, have been inspired by Kenyan Gen Z, have been organizing protests on social media and decided to take a step further by organizing an anti-corruption match at the Uganda parliament. If you recall, this is similar to what the Gen Z protesters in Kenya did, which destroyed some parts of the Kenya building. However, in response to the planned protest, the president of Uganda, Yoweri Museveni, sent a strong warning to the protesters, demanding that they calm off the protests. In a televised address on Saturday, President Museveni, who has ruled Uganda for nearly four decades, said that the protesters are playing with fire and that the anti-corruption march will not be allowed. In the three-hour-long, wide-ranging address, Museveni said, What right do you have to seek to generate chaotic behavior? We are busy producing, cheap food, other people in other parts of the world are starving. You here want to disturb us. You are playing with fire because we cannot allow you to disturb us. In addition to this, Museveni also accused the organizers of the protesters of working with foreigners to cause chaos in Uganda, adding that the government will not allow disruptions to the country's progress. If you recall, this was a similar tactic employed by Kenyan President Ruto at the beginning of the protest in the country. However, just like how Gen Z in Kenya forged ahead despite the warning from the government, the citizens of Uganda have stated that the protest will hold. On Monday, the Uganda police force described the planned protests as potentially anarchic in a statement, warning it shall not tolerate disorderly conduct. However, according to the organizers, the police have refused to grant permission for the march but the march will be held because it is their constitutional right to peaceful demonstrations. We don't need police permission to carry out a peaceful demonstration. It is our constitutional right, one of the main protest leaders, Luez Opolose said. Another protester, Shamim Nambasa said, Our starting point in the fight against corruption is parliament, and the demonstration is on irrespective of what police is saying. Some protesters even went ahead to share their photos on social media, urging fellow citizens to remember them if they don't make it home alive. Just in case I get abducted or I die in the march, you can use this for creating awareness. Otherwise, tell mom I played a fundamental role in saving my country. I know she will be happy, said one activist, Asheraf Hector, on X. Another wrote, Tomorrow, very early in the morning, I will join my fellow young people as we march to parliament against escalating corruption in Uganda. We will come face to face with murderers, and in case things go south for me, this is my official portrait. Meanwhile, ahead of the protests, the government had already begun to carry out a crackdown on those who expressed support for the protest. Ugandan opposition leader Bobby Wine said on Monday he supported the protest, which he clarified was organized by the young people of Uganda and not his NUP party. According to Wine, his party secretariat had been cordoned off by security forces and some party leaders had been violently arrested ahead of the Tuesday march. The effort by the regime to clamp down and make it the planned protest look like an NUP initiative is meant to weaken it because they want to make it appear like a partisan matter, he said in a statement on X. So what exactly is the reason for the planned protest in Uganda? Well, in recent times there have been growing discontent regarding corruption in Uganda, with the US and UK recently imposing sanctions on high-ranking officials, including parliamentary speaker Anita Annett among, over allegations of corruption. According to its anti-graft body, the Inspectorate of Government, Uganda grapples with widespread government corruption with an estimated 10 trillion Uganda currency that's about $2.7 billion in public funding diverted each year. In 2003, the country scored 26 on Transparency International's Corruption Perceptions Index, which ranks countries on a scale of 0 to 100, with 0 meaning highly corrupt and 100 signifying that a country is very clean. 
Although President Museveni has said that his government is actively fighting corruption, the citizens are obviously not impressed with his administration's way of handling the corruption. Hence the reason for the protests tagged hash march to parliament on July 23rd to hash stop corruption. Some have also called for the Speaker of the Parliament, Anita Anand Among, to resign. Anita was among high-profile Ugandan politicians sanctioned by the United States and the United Kingdom for corruption earlier this year. However, the Uganda Speaker has pushed back against the sanctions, calling them politically motivated and claiming they were triggered by Uganda's defiance of international pressure after passing a strict anti-LGBTQ law last year. Without a doubt, the Uganda planned protest is partly sparked by the continuing demonstrations in neighboring Kenya, which were originally organized in response to proposed tax hikes, but have evolved into a movement now calling for the government of Kenya's President William Ruto to step down. We can't rule out the influence because in both countries, young people are taking the lead, said human rights lawyer Kiza. The regimes are different. In Kenya, there is a relative democracy. Here there is mostly a military dictatorship. So the contexts are different and the issues are different, but they kind of feed off the Kenyan energy, she added. But aside from the inspiration from Kenya, Human Rights Watch senior researcher Oryam Nyeko said that it's important to note that anger over corruption had been simmering in Uganda for much longer. According to the reports, Museveni has long been accused of shielding corrupt but influential government officials from criminal prosecution. The social media campaign hash Uganda Parliament Exhibition, which was launched in February 2024, laid bare the abuse of public funds, irregular expenditure, nepotism, and corruption in the parliament. The post focused in particular on Parliament Speaker Anita Among, an influential member of the ruling party, who was criticized for allegedly collecting huge sums in allowance spending on foreign travel, including trips that did not happen. The revelations in the East African nation, which ranks 141 out of 180 countries on the 2023 Corruption Perceptions Index, sparked outrage and demands for reforms for months. In addition to this, there is the fact that Uganda has a long history of repression. According to numerous reports, under Museveni, who has ruled the country for 38 years, Uganda has descended into a repressive state with a long history of intimidation, harassment, arbitrary arrests, detention, and torture of those who are critical of the government. According to researcher Niejo, we see some criticism in the media and social media of the government but there are many ways in which you can't express disagreement with how the country is being run. He added that one of those is through protests that have historically been cracked down on, particularly by the security forces. I think the government, and Museveni in particular, is very sensitive to the idea of people mobilizing in large numbers. In addition, Uganda's security forces have also faced numerous allegations of brutality towards critics of the government. In 2020, Ugandan security forces used lethal force against protesters demonstrating against the arrest of Bobby Wine, killing 54 and leaving scores injured. So right now, the question is, will the citizens of Uganda ignore the threat and warnings from the president and the police force and go ahead to continue the protest? Meanwhile, the Gen Z movement in Kenya has achieved significant milestones, notably the successful withdrawal of the finance bill, the dismissal of the cabinet, the only resignation of the police chief due to abuse of power, and President Ruto's engagement with protesters. These victories have spurred more zeal for the protest to go on, but this time, the target is the resignation of Ruto as president of the country. Time will tell how all these protests will unfold. But the fact is that these protests are a testament to the fact that African citizens have had enough of the incompetency and greed exhibited by their leaders, and they have woken up to the realization that something must be done. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video.